motion to uh, call meeting order. Second. Um, Dave, we'll start off with the uh, motion approved. Um, to start off with the uh, approval of the minutes from the prior meeting. I understand that there will be a correction. Yeah, to uh, Peter's last name is spelled incorrectly, so we'll That's right. just yeah. correct that. So we can accept the minutes as to be amended. Can someone need to move that? Motion to accept the minutes amended. Second. Uh, now we get to the vote. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Aye. 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 Uh, sorry. Uh, next, uh, water and sewer rates, which show uh, probably take up much of the meeting today. Sure. <laughs> um, so um, after the feedback from the previous meeting, um, I, I provided more information. Uh, first, if uh, if you look at uh, page six of the packet, um, I provided uh, there was a question about uh, in terms of the rates, how many people are impacted uh, on, on the rate, and. Um, we can only take snapshots in time to just figure it out. And the most recent data that I have that's uh, that's reliable is from January of um, uh, the period of January to March 2023. And you can see uh, the percentage of accounts. There were uh, 4,955 active accounts during that quarter of that quarter, um, 1,502 of them had billable water in step one or 30% of the accounts. Now that's not surprising because this is during the winter time. And then uh, of that 409, uh, 4,955, 646 of the accounts had billable water up to step two, 162 to step three, and 99 to step four. The period of time that we um, generally look at, and you'll see a three-year history, that's the October to December period, because that's basically picking up the summer consumption. And, uh, and you can see the numbers are much closer uh, in the uh, 22 of the 5,100 active accounts, 4,414 of them had some billable consumption at step one or 86.5%. Dave, is that 5,100 active secondary account? Or did yes, it start? Irrigation. Irrigation. It was secondary yeah. meters. Yep. Secondary meters. And then the light blue is the domestic or the primary meters. And of course, that you would expect the percentage you're seeing, regardless of time of year. Uh, January to March, uh, the 8,891 8, accounts, 8,847 of them had billable volume at step one or 99.5% of the accounts. And um, the domestic during October to December of the 9,103 accounts, 8,926 of them had billable <laughs> consumption. Uh, or in other words, 98.1% of all the accounts were at step one. 89.4% um, had usage going up to step two. And as I said uh, at the meeting, most people are step one to step or step two. Yeah. Then you see the drop off uh, to just 17.6% of all accounts. And then 6.7% um, get to the top step. Is there a somewhat consistent profile of that 6.7% that make it to step four? As we think about like a progressive rate structure? The, I mean, the 607 during uh, 2022 um, may not be the same as the 390, if you're mm -hmm. looking at page seven, that fell into that group in 21 or the 704 in um, 2020. There are some 
Um, we, so in fact, we have a resident who lives um, up a Charles River Road that falls in the top 25 consumers of water in town. So and we, we, you're looking at Sheridan, you're looking at the hospital, you're looking at yeah, okay. uh, college, and this one household is in that group. So um, yeah. it always stands out to me when I see that. Do you think there's anything there with the fact that irrigation is so high? Like, are these just people that don't have the secondary and they're wanting their cars? That's, that's part of it. Which that's why I was wondering if you were asking that, yeah, because like that's that's an interesting data point right there. There is, it, it is clear, we can uh, see it, that um, those who don't have sewer yeah, yeah, yeah. are don't have secondary meters. Right. Uh, and their usage is definitely much higher. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is so clear. But a large share of step four is commercial. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And very few households. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Step four. And then uh, sewer, again, the sewer is based upon water use. It, the tracks in the same method methodology. And again, the difference between build sewer and build water primarily is those accounts that um that don't have sewer. What's more interesting is the average use that number is there's a lot of consistency there. Mm -hmm. it's, Step one. I mean, just looking at it, uh, step one, uh, January to March of 23, step one, the average was 578 cubic feet. Uh, in October to December, 588 um, cubic feet. In that same time period in 21, 587 cubic feet. Uh, in 2020, 589 cubic feet. And again, you would expect that because that's not as impacted by irrigation. That's basically uh, most likely a single individual living in yeah. living in an area without lots of land. So uh, we provided that in, uh, information to really get a sense. Of uh, the impact and the rates. The uh, the next uh, new piece of information that's over provided in here, um, page nineteen. Uh, the committee had asked about maybe increasing the uh, the base uh, service fee, and what I did is I also looked at other MWRA uh, communities to see if, um, what others have for any sort of base fee. And you can see that they're all, of, uh, all over the place um, and uh, water. Some is just a flat fee, plus they build for consumption. In some instances, usually when the fee is much higher, uh, the fee is inclusive of some uh, portion of consumption as well. You know, so I'm seeing here that Denim, I know one of the um, new scenarios you have is the fee uh, uh, for the first 300 cubic feet of yeah. consumption. I see that. So Denim has something comparable. Yeah, so, yeah comparable. So 931 per pound. Mm -hmm. That's for both the water and sewer system. That's for both. Yeah, there, there was just one. I, I called that out. So. Um, what uh, a water bill in Hingham, that's interesting. That's one of the higher ones. You're paying $17.69 yeah. plus fee assumption. But in the case of the sewer, you're going to pay $175, but they give you a credit towards your consumption use up to $175. Then if you if your consumption puts you over that, well, that was that was 
very interesting. So again, it's not a fee, it's just that's the uh, regardless of your consumption, you're gonna pay at least $175 for sewer in Hingham. And the other thing is they have different billing cycles. I thought that was interesting. They send the water bill out monthly and the sewer bill out twice a year. <laughs> yes. So, uh, and then this is gone. And then in one, uh, in one of the, um, in one water uh, alternative uh, water uh, rate structure, W7 and uh, sewer, S9, I'm showing what the rate structure, the block structure would look like compared to what it currently is on page 21. So with that, I'm going to jump to page 25. In the um, uh, option W6, this was one that the committee specifically called out that was basically combining options uh, w, uh, W2 and W4, um, which is all step rates increasing by 2.23% plus increasing the annual uh, fee by $4 for the year. That uh, generates, um, that's with, uh, that generates a surplus. It is slightly above our target range. We're going to look at a target range between 98.5 to 101.5. This is 101. Sir, Dave, which page is that? Sorry. Page 25. <laughs> Oh, no, this is the weird one. Yeah, okay. The um, so that's slightly above the range, it would result in a 2.8 percent increase in the water bill, uh, for um, a household of 12,000 cubic feet a year. And then option seven introduces the concept of a base fee of $30. But it would, in this concept, would include the first 300 cubic feet of water. So currently, the fee is $15 a quarter plus consumption. This would be $30 a quarter plus consumption above 300 cubic feet. So if you, uh, so it would replace the current fee for all time. Yes. Okay. So 100% of households would then get a bill. Right. Uh, again, a hundred some of the households do get a bill and they pay fifteen dollars. So everybody would pay for it. Everybody right? pays the fifteen dollar fee currently. Got it. So that's not captured in these percentages. No, that's on that's on page six. You're not accounting for that. You're just accounting for usage. The usage and okay, got it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically we would double the revenue from the fixed fee, yeah. but we're giving up some revenue by saying the first right. 300 cubic feet of usage uh, is inclusive in that amount. It's the 300 dash or slash 100. Oh, for the monthly accounts, it would be the first 100 cubic feet. Got it, okay, thank you. That would be, and the fee wouldn't be, uh, it would be $10 a month. Okay. Would this be um, considered, you know, a new fee and would require some sort of different, hypothetically speaking, uh, like a approval process or something by the town board or anything like that. It's about a public hearing. Okay. And it, it's 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 no different than any other fee that's set. It's that's what the purpose of public hearing is, and, and anything could be introduced, changing the block structure, changing the rates, adding fees, removing fees. Okay. Um. So on just question on the blocks, is there any, so I think we had this discussion before. We don't really have a rubric behind why the blocks are the way they are. The, well, step one, uh, the 600 was established 
um, eight, nine years ago was basically meant for low end consumers of water, like in individuals living by themselves in a condominium or something. Okay. Step two was meant to capture most of the average households in town. Step three was to capture almost every single household. And then step four is high end uses and commercial operations. But in the past, they've been changed at different rates, percentages. Oh, that's because of the, the sense of the of the committee or the board, right, right, yeah, or the, or the select board as to where mm -hmm. they were thinking it might be appropriate to increase one rate at a greater percentage than another rate. Sometimes it's a metric. Sometimes it's just political. Hey Dave, why on going back to page 25 here yeah. on, on the $30? So you zeroed out the revenues from step one, but I assume just, just so I'm accounting for basically you taking all the households in the first if everybody used 300 cubic feet of water, we're not getting any extra revenue right. for that use. So I have to account for that in my total volume. And that and at the same time, no was obviously the plug it right now. That would, but uh but uh, the whole rate structure and everything. <laughs> Basically, this concept does generate slightly over what our target revenue target would be. We're at a hundred point one percent. And as as this type of um, base fee that includes a level of consumption, has this been considered before? It has. It's been. Uh, and a number of years. Um, it was it was pre-COVID uh, that it was last considered, and the majority of the committee was not in favor of. And the majority of the committee was not in favor of a higher base fee for those who may not be here, but they would be paying that fee. That was my understanding that the general uh, uh, reason that several of the community members didn't cost to recommend that to select for. It's never been, uh, uh, that concept has been presented, been presented as an option for the board, select board to consider. Select board's aware that it's been bid, um, but, um, but did not ask for it to be brought forward. And I know I asked a bunch of questions. I'm going to ask it for the sewer as well. But how on page 25 of these two new scenarios, how does that uh, uh, fit with respect to the current fiscal year to date? I, I was showing John earlier the, the current shortfall. In the I did show that, that, uh, that again, we still don't have reliable enough data uh, to build data. To, uh, to know where we're going to end up, but but we're on target um, to have consumption levels close to um, 2020, and uh, and hence I showed what that would generate in revenue. Uh, that was um, I think it's the last page of the of the chapter. Okay, No. 45. Yes. So page 45, based upon the 2020 consumption data, um, based upon the rates that we have in place right now, uh, it's, you can see it's a significant shortfall um you know we're at 85.7 percent of the target for um uh, for water and for sewer we're at uh 90 percent of the target and are, are both funds and as well as we're both on here they're both still on track to deplete either all or most of the cash that would be available to these enterprise funds yes that's right um And 
never turned into whatever we retained her earnings. That's what I meant. Yes, I know. Just thanks for being recorded. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have any questions on the new scenarios or why? Oh, sewer five. Yep. So that one's um, basically a flat rate except for the last tier. Yes, yeah, that rate is higher than yeah. No one gets not going to lower it. No one gets that one's step four going higher than the concept was if we went with a flat rate, uh, in, in that concept, the flat rate effectively the top rate would drop. So the high end consumers would have been a benefit. Yeah. And while the low end would have oh, a significant okay. increase. So but the next concern concept was have a flat rate, but no rate will drop below what it currently is. And that's what that scenario uh, 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 option five was looking at. So Going to the new, can you, yeah, you kind of provide us with scenario eight, the new one, and nine. Yeah. And uh, on 29, S8, uh, that again is based on the input of the committee. That's combining the now um, options S4 and S7, which is increasing all the step rates 6.9%. Okay. And again, a reminder that 6.9% represents what the average. Uh, Increase is in the MWR assessment. So we still need them. Uh, and increasing the base fee by four dollars for the year. So they would go from forty-eight dollars a year to fifty-two dollars a year. That uh, does get us to the range that we want to be in between ninety-eight point five and. 101.5, it is still showing a shortfall of uh, slightly over $80,000. It would mean that the average bill would increase by $93.04, which is a 7% increase. Average sewer bill. Option F9 is the same concept of introducing a flat rate. So in, uh, instead of paying $12 a quarter for a sewer service, it would be $57.19. But it would be inclusive of the first 300 cubic feet. How was, it, how was that number derived at 5719? 5719, it was a combination of the uh, what 300 cubic feet at the flat rate plus the increase that we are uh, looking to increase the um, basic administrative fee. So, can I go? I want to rewind a little bit. So, on page 16, just to get back to the, the target recap. So, we Putting volume numbers aside, right? We have to go up six percent, right, on the on the sewer side. The uh, the, the sewer side six point one seven percent. Yes, that's that's how much more revenue we need to uh, show that we can generate through our rate structure. Uh, this is what we thought. What we thought we were going right. to generate in 24. And then the water is 2.23. And yes, correct. And so what's driving the six the six percent, the six point one seven? And I'm sorry I wasn't here last week. Yeah, no, that's quite right. It's um the cost increase the um MWRA assessment uh, yeah. uh, significantly are um our um, uh, cost for uh, treatment, testing, and power are all higher in the sewer enterprise funds. And the the and added the last thing is debt service. Okay. Our debt service is going to be uh, increasing significantly. This has been uh, 
known for several years and then worn the week uh, in town meeting just through mm. the $13 million debt authorization, which will be starting to pay uh, that project is moving forward and will be starting to pay the debt service in, uh, in two years. Uh, for the interceptor? Yes. Yeah. Um, and we have another yeah. um, 20 million more coming in the next few fiscal years. So it's it's not like a temporary. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's for real. Okay. Yeah. So then um, why why are the mass NWA volumes up if the water numbers are down? The uh, our water, our billable water and our uh, billable sewer are down, but that's meaning other communities are down even more than us because right, our because share. Just, yes. yeah. And also, uh, as you, as I know that you know, the formula is based upon three things, your average mm -hmm. flows, uh, your sewer population, and your total population. Many communities have um, a, uh, have a hundred percent population sewered, mm. and hence there's no one sewered population. So that's that's an, uh, a neutral effect up for Nina because we have a percentage of people um, of that are unsewered. That just increases our share of the assessment more because in theory our sewer system can be built out even further. And the MWRA has to factor that into their capital plan. Hence, why they have that model. Mm. So uh, those are the factors. But our uh, growth levels are higher than some of the many of the communities. Boston's flows are down notably. Mm. They also change their average at the the averaging that they do. Um, so uh, decreases in volume take longer to benefit. Uh, and conversely, uh, increases in volume take a little longer to go up. Um, so, is it is it when you say averaging, you mean the 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 wastewater meter? Yes, recording it. So they're smoothed out. They did. They're trying to smooth those out. That started at the request. A lot of emphasis that the Boston Water and Sewer was able to convince the MWR. Yeah. This was right before COVID hit. So the the irony is they would have had even a greater benefit um, had it been the old way because they had a significant drop off. Okay. So, but the fact is it's taking uh, their rate increases have been much less than than some of the suburban communities because they're still uh, benefiting from the phased in of those, you know, that significant drop off mm -hmm. in 2020. But uh, average flows in several of the communities. So um, this is another reason why Public Works is looking at it. I and I mm. uh, inflow and infiltration to the system to see if the, there are areas um, and uh, people where that's groundwater uh, mm. that could get into the, the sewer. So when it's uh, the, the MWRA is measuring the flow. That groundwater is there also form. They got to treat the groundwater that yeah. floats in there. So that can cause that could be a contributor. And an inflow is a oh, lack of any better word an illegal hookup to the mm -hmm. uh to the sewer system. So those mm -hmm. are things that um the town was very, very proactive and had made a lot of uh, capital investments during the late 90s, early 2000s. And we were the benefactor of that for a number of years. Our average increase in the MWRA assessment was below that of the MWA overall. The last few years, that's converse. Our, in, our increase in sewer assessment has been greater than the overall uh, increase in the MWRA budget. And again, that's for the I and I part of it. The other factor is other communities have been able either because they've been able to reduce their I and I, or they've actually had an absolute decline in their uh, in their volume. Some of the communities I looked at, not surprising because uh, you 
to see the demographic details and stuff, and their populations are declining. Mm -hmm. Needham has not been a town that had decreasing population. In fact, they, I think that they uh, did the source that I read it, and I don't know if it was uh, Business Journal or um, on the Globe, but one of them, the, the updated figures of population have changed since the 2000. 20 census. There are a number of communities, Boston most notably, had the greatest loss in population in that time. But in this area, Needham and Wellesley were the only communities that had increases in their population. Dedham showed a decline in population. Lexington showed a decline. Weston. So, can you? Um, so, so conceptually, yeah. right? The on the on the sewer side. Like what ballpark? No, no accuracy required here. Like of the increase, what percentage do you think is driven by fixed costs, like debt service, all that kind of stuff? I, uh, it's about 50, 50. 50 percent. Yeah, okay, it's about fifty percent uh, cost, fifty percent volume changes. Right. The um, and and those are those are investments that have a long tail and are going to, right. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that in the rate structure, when you think about a basic service fee, it's your kind of, it's your, it's your right to be part of the system, right. regardless of whether you use it or not. So it's there for your use. And if, and obviously we're not going to, it's not going to end up this way, but, but if a large part of the costs are, are being driven by capital, there's not, those aren't really so much usage based. So it seems like the the basic service fee would have to be increased for that more than some of these scenarios, probably. This theoretically. Well, yeah, well, so so that, the concept behind yeah. doing that. That's, that's yeah, that, that's, that's a good segue to the question I was asked. Yeah. So, it, say, you know, scenario or option X for water and option Y for sewer yeah. are selected hypothetically yeah. and within the target range. I'm really curious about how what would happen if there were similar shortfalls in the water and sewer enterprise funds for during mid-year fiscal 25 with free cash depleted. How, what would retainer. happen? Retainer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what 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 would be the options? I mean, would it not require like a mid-year rate increase? Has that happened before? I mean, I'm just trying to think of would there be. I mean, I know it's not the purview of this committee as we discussed last yeah. week, but it would have to be looking at the expense side. I mean, just trying to get an idea. The well, yes, yeah, but the expenses are looked at good yeah. times or bad times, anyways. The finance committee is pretty oh. diligent on that. Uh, but um, on the expense side, the other thing is you just have to. It adjust your rates uh, okay. to reflect the increases, and we've um, we've been fortunate. A combination of our methodology approach of using averages, mm -hmm. uh, which tends to smooth out when you have to do the increases. That's the approach it's taken, as well as we've had growth that's also helped to uh, uh, help to. Uh, mitigate the impact of the cost. Like, that felt like there's to be capital improvements, like the interceptor. If Needham was having no growth, we'd have to still do it. Right. The, the, the system is old and has to be replaced. If you get new entrants, you're splitting that cost over more people. So then that keeps the cost lower. So that's the benefit of, of, um, of the. Uh, of the increased number of housing stock that we've had over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, and it worked very well until we lost it. Yep. yep. Uh, when was the last time there was a mid-year increase in the town? Uh, we uh, did it uh, just um, uh, in fiscal 23. Well, well, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, hypothetically, if the same shortfalls were occurring a year from now or even less than a year from now, mm -hmm. is it fair to say that those would warrant a mid-year increase? The type of level, the magnitude of the shortfalls? A magnitude in what's actually causing. We would all, we are always looking at what the 
Meg, do we try not to over uh, over commit irrigation? Because you can have significant swings in the irrigation. And if your rate structure is so heavily reliant on selling more than you normally would sell in water, that's setting yourself up for that need to do rate increase uh, increases. Whereas you're basing it upon what's reasonably assured what your volume will be in the irrigation. And you've had uh, an exceptionally wet year. Uh, so if it dropped below what would normally be the an average, I mean, an average year, not a dry year. Sure. Um, that would not be as concerning that you would need to address your rates right away. You could look to address that in the following annual fiscal year based on what the year end results would be. And to that point, because I anticipate that we are, but we will need to increase sewer rates at more than a nominal amount for several years, we, um, because of the infrastructure needs, as well as the pattern has been declining year after year in billable volume, that perhaps we're looking at an option in the sewer rate structure that has a higher percentage increase and not adjust the water rates for this coming fiscal year with the understanding uh, explaining to the select board that there'll probably be a need for an increase in the water rates in 26, but we have another year to look at that in order to smooth out the effects. So rather than uh, an eight or nine percent increase in the bill, the sewer may be going up that amount, but since people have sewer also have water, but there's no increase in the water, it will still be a, a large increase. Hence why on these tables I show um, on uh, starting on page uh, 30, showing what the percentage increases on the average bills combining both water and sewer. So we know that every water scenario presented meets our targets. Even the current rates yep. flat. Yep. And Even not you changing mean, the rates. The, the current, you have that illustrated. Yeah. Right? It's 98.7. Yeah. yeah. And, and what? It's on page 22, right? Yeah. That's not adjusting rates for fiscal 25 for the water system. And, that, and that's the, the lower volume. That's what the, again, if we use that average, four year average, and that's been our methodology. And it works. No, the, the four year average, does that include the lower volumes that we're experiencing? It includes 20 to 23. Of course, it doesn't include 24 because we never take the current fiscal year because we're doing this before we have the full results of the year in. Mm -hmm. And but I thought we started off by saying that we're trending. We are trending down. Right. Yeah. Because the volumes are lower. Right. And that's not reflected in the model that we're using. But we've never used the current fiscal year. I know we haven't. Right. Yeah. And this year, I wouldn't want to do that because we're implementing a new billing system, and I don't have, I don't have uh, nine months of data mm. to know where we are. I'm getting at the fact that they're trending down based upon a different methodology, which it isn't completely reflective of what we'll be billing because it's not telling me how much is being used in each step, but we know how much work water we're pumping. Pumped water is down in comparison to the other years. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I expect build consumption will be down, but again, how much in each step, I don't know. So we, we know that that's not, that's not going to be right. We know that it's going to be redder because the volumes are lower. The volumes are lower in 24. Right. The question is, will the volumes be a little higher in 25 or consistent with our 40 year average? Right. Hmm. I hear you're saying, I mean, my, my concern is though, it's really cold water rates flat at fiscal 25. And John was just referring to trends continue to be negative. Is that going to result in even like a much higher water rate increase than otherwise? Right. Anything else 
proofs of this packet. That is, that, that's correct. That could, uh, that is a potential consequence of not increasing the water rates. Um, and, and, and the very valid reason to also recommend a water rate increase. What I was suggesting that if the committee was uh, interested in providing an option that it's, uh, that the sewer rates, they definitely have to go up. That, that step one rate is so low. It's just, and it's such a, a significant portion of all the built volume. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's why so many uh, scenarios don't work. We have, um, everyone will feel an effect when we have a, a greater increase in the step one rate mm -hmm. than, than uh, the step four rate. Step three rate. So, um, if there was a reason to try to mitigate the impact that the sewer bill is going to go up by holding off water, which um, the water rate increase for one year, because it works in the model, but there is a risk mm -hmm. that next year the volume will be that much lower that we're going to have to adjust the water rates even more and less. Unless um, billable water for the last few months improves, so it, is it fair to say that your preference or suggestion of the holding water rates uh, level? What, what would be my suggestion is I would not just go in with one recommendation. Okay, I think whenever there's a high increase, the select board traditionally hasn't liked being put in the situation. It's an up or down vote. You read my mind. I was going to ask you what, what what scenario after keeping rates flat would yes. you suggest or would you consider your opinion? I think uh, I think the rates based upon what additional revenue we need to generate the two percent uh, two point two three percent is a reasonable uh, aboard. I wouldn't increase the uh, the fee. Yeah, even though we haven't increased that fee in, in almost 20 years. Yeah. Um, it's, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you know, and it, yeah, no, I have like both. It makes sense because we do have to have a couple options this year because yeah. of the sewer rate being so high. I understand what you're saying, Dave, on the optics of this yeah. thing. If I'm on the select board, I say we're not raising your water rates this year, but, you know, but the bad news is our sewer rates need to go up considerably, right? Yeah. So my my suggestion or something to think about would be almost like a, like a medium, high, low, like it, with the select board, how many examples is, or how many recommendations is, do we get to be too many recommendations? Like we don't want to- Three is the max. Three, three, three for each? Three period. No, three. Three uh, combinations. Three combinations. Three yeah. combinations. So six. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, to John's point, I don't know if if you know one thing that we should consider in the committee is whether or not there should be a fee scenario in there as one of the three. Yeah. Right. Doesn't mean the board has to accept it, obviously. But I would agree, based on the the amount that we need to get the shortfall in the sewers, it's it's a, it's, a, it's going to be a pretty pretty big hit. Um, so is it fair to say that option two would be given that for the percentage or the two percentage? Yeah. Is, is would be. I think that's very yeah. reasonable, defensible, and okay. it's it's like no, it's not reached twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Well, there was like one that we had like removing subsidy is step three that was getting some type of a minor increase to the water, but it wasn't. I don't know. And that would be the other thing we could talk about is whether or not you know removing a subsidy on a higher step or something like that. Yeah. Um. What What about option four versus option two? Is it four would be nominal, would be a lower increase, would be more certain because of the. the so I'm at W4. Yeah, four uh, would be just increasing the annual fee, which is currently $60 a year for $15 a quarter. It would be $64 a year or, or $16 a quarter. The rates themselves will change. Yeah. Certainly a nominal um, in 
nominal increase, but that's more predictable yes it, it you're getting billed that whether you use any water or yeah. not and then again be clear it'd be a four dollar increase in all the fee for the domestic and for those who have second meter second meter i i really like option six which is the new one combines the new two and the four and i think if you were going to go to the select board you'd have option six option two I think five is also struggling to get balance to your point. It's moderating the increase by removing the subsidy, which gives a blended increase of 1.2%. So you aren't over solving. You said five? Five. Well, I don't like the short stall because I don't like the gamble. And I and i and I think that the and I'm just thinking of it from a utility perspective that the the annual he hasn't been increasing how many years? Yeah, yeah. The only concern, I, I I don't disagree with your thought process on it. Again, but you know the the issue that it, you know, the select board might have is that it's like here's a huge rain on your sewer bill, mm -hmm. and instead of again having the ability to tell the the, the people that need them that nothing's going to change on your water bill because we know that your sewer bill is going up. Instead, they're going to tell them that their service fees, everybody's getting charged. And, and my point was just that in some of these other steps, it's kind of like the saying of like, if you use the same water you did last year and you're in step one or step two, your bill is not going to go up. It's kind of like the, you know, you yeah. make the same money taxes are going up, right? So, um, I, I again, I, I don't know what the right answer is right now, but I'm just saying that's something I think we need to think about. So, well, with, with that in mind, why don't we table actually the water? We need to go to the sewer then, so we can have an idea about that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, what do you think? In terms of so, um, what would have to be what's the yeah. appropriate proposals or I? The um. Really, that's funny. I'm, I'm really thinking the um, options, option A. Yeah, and that's what I think as well. Option A. I, I, I was, I, I was, option A is not to not. We're well. I mean, you're yeah. talking like 70% of Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You think option uh, option nine, the concept, <laughs> there's merit to it, and there's certainly more fixed cost. Uh, it will, will be more controversial. Though. Yes, because we're changing the block, block structure. Okay. Right. And I almost would want to change the block structure in a year that we don't need to actually adjust the rates. Mm -hmm. Okay. And basically, when that last time was done, it was somewhat, there weren't significant rate changes. The other, just in case, and sewer, the other option, which I just know won't fly, is the flat rate. Yeah. Yeah. Sewer I is, don't I, I don't like that idea. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if we'd have a vote in this community for that. <laughs> Um, I think eight is very pragmatic. It's defensible. I mean, the issue is I know you want to provide, and I, I agree, the board of choices, but other than option eight, none of the other choices are yeah. really. I mean, setting aside nine for, for the other issues that we just discussed, none of the other options are particularly. Well, they don't. Yeah. They don't come anywhere near generating the revenues. But why wouldn't the flat rate for sewer not work? Not fly. Oh, because the people with the greatest subsidy is going to on a percentage basis is going to see the greatest increase, or to put it in perspective, I, I provided those charts of the impact. Mm -hmm. It's um, if you look at the impact on a consumer, that you know the single person living by themselves, it's uh, purely regressive. Uh, yeah. Same um, with five. flat rate, but not lower. I mean, basically, the, that means homes, people, residents. 
So, I mean, seven looks somewhat <clears throat> practical after eight. And that's just, a, so it's basically slightly lower. Obviously. Yeah, so uh, for a person uses 2,400 cubic feet of water during the year, that's all step step one, uh, water and sewer. Uh, not changing the rates at all of water, which is discussing of changing the rates, but just keeping the current water rate structure and adopting the flat rate, it's a 10.8% increase. <clears throat> Okay, so after eight is a fair to say seven would be, uh, that's just based solely on the NWI estimated. That's correct. So effectively it's eight without base increase. Mm -hmm. from all the mm -hmm. okay. yeah. well, It's $4 that. less, so yeah. it's, that's the yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I don't like things. Yeah, I, I, I think some of us are in agreement that, that eight seems, all by seven. Best office with a sewer. Yeah. Okay. So with seven percent in mind as a rough ballpark, we can go back to the water. Why don't we go back to the water then? I mean, the reality with water is that between five and two, it only drives a four dollar change in the average water bill. So they seem more dramatic on paper than they actually are. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, sorry. look at look at page 31, mm -hmm. the combination of five and eight and two and eight. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Water. And our number. You all see 57 and 54. All right, number five and eight and two and eight. 57 and 54. Yeah, yeah. five point four percent, five point six. It's such a nominal impact yeah. to the average household. You know, agree. My opinion with the water. Here's my key concern, and I, and I, I, along the lines of what John was mentioning a few minutes ago, which is especially with the retained earnings being uh, depleted. I'm just a little concerned in terms of if there's a shortfall in terms of what liquidity there would be left, which is basically nothing. Not not water liquidity, but cash liquidity and reserves. Um, I hear what you're saying, though, in terms of the, the, the kind of the politics and the optics around reason. But it, it, I think that's why we just got to figure out a couple recommendations. Because yeah. if I was on that select board, I would yeah. probably not like to have one option when having a rate increase that big on a sewer charge. Okay. Now, if we still feel like that's that one, what was the sewer? Sorry, eight, eight. Yeah. So it's almost like you kind of have to say that you we you have to take the recommendation on eight, otherwise there's really nothing you can do to avoid the shortfall. And here's a couple options on the water to pair it, and then one of them just being keep the current rate structure. Okay. And then the two more that are a little more what you would feel is a fiscally responsible choice is to. What was the other, I, I, for the water, what would the, the three recommendations hypothetically be? Keep it current, option two, and what would be the other option? The four, option five. Or option five, okay. Uh, and Dave, you were saying, like, I think it was option 52 or scenario 52, mm -hmm. the, the, the increased set fee on water and sewer. You're saying it's not now is not a good time to kind of consider, you know, where you just include the 300 cubic feet. And I think it's 52. Yes, uh, that's um, uh, option nine, and sewer nine. nine, and then water seven, though, in that case, yeah. right? Correct. Uh, which is scenario 52. Yeah. That's an eight percent ACES uh, for, you know, the, the average. Uh, uh, the average uh, twelve thousand to be feet a year, but again, focusing on the small household number, that uh, scenario fifty-two 
it's a 24.5% increase. Right. It gets to you, John, to your, your fixed cost concern, but it's, it's pretty big. If you remember me against Roth, who were the primary examples of uh, third lot, uh, third step in that rate structure? Third step. Um, well, the businesses um, and a, a segment of the residential properties. It's, it's in the being percent, I think, in total of households. And then it varies for the year. And like so the other the reality is everybody's not using the same amount of water each quarter. So some might inch up to into um uh, well pun intended into option uh step three, but in the winter they don't get out of step step one. Did you say the board was uh, proposed with other what you would consider a significant increase suggestions in the past? It's been a long time. It's, uh, it's uh, since the abandonment of uh, always relying upon Coca Cola, and that was back in 2004, 2005, there's never been a very significant uh, increase in the average rate over time. Again, just that. Uh, the table that I provide on the last, the last page of the doc document, uh, the average household change. Need them, uh, the five year change, it's page 44. <laughs> uh, over the last five years, that average bill has gone up in five years 10.3% compared to the MWRA communities as a whole. It's all of them. It's a 19.7% change in the group. Uh, and the communities that we generally compare ourselves to, 19.4. But then you look at some individual communities, uh, you know, Cambridge, a 33% increase in their rates over five years, um, whereas Stedham was only a 3.6% increase, and Brandon a 30.4% increase. So it seems significant. Significant. So over two, three times more than what's ever been done in any kind of recent history to yeah. recommend in the select board. Yes. We're, we're, yes, we haven't had, uh, it's been a number of years since we've had, um, since we've had a double digit increase. We got to ask about a different water option that we really haven't discussed. I know we discussed it last calendar year, this concept, but. Option three, the irrigation only. And I know we, we ultimately we did not last year elect to go with that. But did you see, was it last week or last meeting that I know I asked about it? You asked because he had been there today. It appears that there's, it's not official, I'll say it for myself, if there's some elasticity in terms of irrigation usage and rates. Is that there? Um... You know, What's been observed in the past? That household that I referenced it doesn't seem to be impacted by race, uh, but there definitely is. It, there is. Uh, it's ironically, it's more on the commercial side. They're more receptive to cutting back, hence AKA Coca Cola. Yeah, cutting back uh, if the rates grow too much. Yeah, uh, whereas uh, individuals. Residents who go out to get a second meter and install an irrigation is they spent a lot of money for their landscaping and, and the money yeah. they spent, they seem to be willing to water and such. But in situations where it's just wet. Yes, yeah, we discussed that. Yes, uh, yeah. consumption definitely declines, uh, billable consumption declines. The other thing is if there's ever a drought situation where DEP yeah, will so order is water ban. Water ban, correct. But in that scenario, we when we talked about that last year, we needed an increase on the water. We couldn't come with a that's right. recommendation. Yeah, that's why. Keep it current. It's, it's more the area. I was just, I was just that. Reviewing everything again. Okay. Well, 
have you been in touch with John? You know, if you had a chance to review this. Uh, he, uh, no, but he had said this, but that he was going to be involved in any activities. Yeah, yeah, no, I knew that. Yeah, yeah today. Okay. So, so we we're meeting again next week too. Right. So it gives you time to all think about the different okay. considerations. So the one we distilled. So for water, three considerations. To show me if this is not accurate. Yes, keeping water rates current. Scenario two or is it scenario five? Uh, yeah. five. And then for sewer, some seems to be more consensus on the sewer uh, with scenario eight, and then followed by seven mm -hmm. as another problem. But it seems like I get the impression that it's consensus. Yeah. It's still like option six for water, but I'll go with the majority. What was six again? Yeah, no, so. so that's the one where there's um flat increase across the no, no. That's blending the two point two the two point two three percent in the four dollar increase in the basic yeah, that's the same yeah. structure as sewer eight. Yeah. Again, I think where we need to land is if you know eventually if we're comfortable with with either just recommending the current water weight structure as as a option. And then that just kind of takes us to that point where we can have that as one of the options and then just try to pick two other water options that we yeah. can all agree on. But present the risks associated with right with keeping rates flat. We just have to figure yeah. out if we can all if we all feel like it, that the current right. water structure something that we're willing to say, yeah, that's fine. It's part of this sewer package of eight. Okay. You'd be happy to give up your chairmanship to pretty pretty quickly. Didn't see that. <laughs> um, any other questions? So next week they will make formal decisions and, and recommendations like John will do that. Right. John, you were here last week, but is there any scenarios that you think we missed? I mean, we asked for some additional ones. No, 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 no. I mean, the only, I, I have a hard time not tying this back to the reasons for drivers. Sure. And, you know, I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a mis I think it's a mistake to kind of separate yourself from that because at some point it's going to come back. You have to come back to it. That's why I think the base fee has to go. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm in town meeting, right? So I know what we voted on. You know, and it's just like, you know, and then what happens is two years later, you said, well, you know, it turns out that we should have increased the, this thing by that amount. And then yeah. the volume still down. And also the model, I think, it's, you know, like we don't hair, we use past volumes, but we don't haircut them, right? So we, we tie ourselves into a volume number that may not work, may, you know, like the sewer number moving as much as it has to me is surprising. That's weird. I don't know. There's so many variables, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, for what's worth, I prefer, for the waters, I prefer four over five, which is the base. I, I agree with your sentiment on that one. Uh, but they're basically, they're so close. Uh, just swapping, you know, slightly less spreadable, I guess. Uh, I mean, I, I, I just, or I'm sorry, it would be a little bit better, but it, you get more certainty. Yeah. No, no, I, I, you know, I agree with that. And ultimately, we're making a recommendation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So all, all we're really going to end up saying is you can keep the current water structure, but might want to consider this, right? Yes. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it, it, I, I assume the floor is a way. No, Dr. I mean, they have put it, they focus on it when they say it's time. A little dashboard. In the yellows and red. What is it? Green, yellow, and red. Yes. It's a joke. Okay. So I so just to recap, water options. I think they're leading or keeping things current. Current two or five sewer eight fall by seven. I can email John and yes. let him know these are the ones that we are um, the leading candidates. Thank you.
Could you just repeat those? Sure. Uh, so water keeping rates uh, flat, not making any changes. Uh, option number two for the water system, which is 2.23% uh, all step increase, and then five, which is uh, increasing basically uh, step three to eliminate the subsidy. Were there a corresponding scenario for each of those that we could just? Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? No worries. I just, yeah, it's a little you. easier. <laughs> Uh, thirty-one fifty-seven fifty-four. Thirty-one. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then that doesn't have the current iterations for water, which is thirty and fifty-three. So now 53 is current with S8? Yeah, mm. correct. And then 30 is current with S7. Yep. And then 55 and 31. 55. Hmm? No, 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 57 and 54. I'm sorry, I, had, I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah, 31, 57, 57 and 54. 54. Yep, yeah, got it. And did someone say 31 as well? 31 is 2 and 7, yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, so we've got 53, 30, 31, 57, and 54. Yep. Right? That's correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Motion is adjourned. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.